I'm Savannah Lee and I'm a singer-songwriter based in Nashville, Tennessee and this is my roundtable interview about my EP, Reminders of You. This was the first song written actually off the entire project. At the time, I did not know it was going to ever come out or anyone would ever hear it. I think I wrote it in February of 2023. I'm one of those people where I have to have like back to the visual thing, like a vibe going on while I'm writing by myself. So I typically like write alone at like midnight because it's super dark and I'll like put the ocean, like a stock footage of ocean on my like TV screen. So that's what I did. So like in my voicemail, you can hear like a whoosh noise because there's like waves because my TV was playing the ocean. I guess like the process of writing that song was over the course of like a few weeks. It didn't happen in one sitting. I remember writing like parts of it and they were all different and none of them were really coming together yet but I just knew that I could find a way to make them fit. I would have to take breaks because I think the song was so personal um, and I really didn't think anybody would ever hear it, but I also just like didn't enjoy writing it and that sounds weird, but I was just like sad. Music kind of makes me confront my feelings. I was confronting a lot during the process of writing it and I wasn't enjoying that, but I also knew that I really liked what I was making. So it was just like this very weird situation to be in. I work with like my mentor. I like sing songs for her and she like, is someone I've been working with for years and I remember playing her that song and during one of our like lessons and she just like cried and she never cries she like never goes into like an emotional territory with me she's honestly like pretty like yeah this is this song is great this song needs this like whatever just helping me structure things and uh, I guess her reaction made me be like okay maybe I should consider putting this out or playing it at least playing it at a show and seeing what happens I remember going and playing it at a couple shows and uh, the feedback was like really good but it also was very overwhelming. I remember specifically remember being in New York and we got back to the apartment that we were staying in. We like kind of were debriefing the show and I heard them like talking about Mason Street like in the corner and I remember like feeling like I don't know why I got like so defensive. I was like no way they're talking about the production right now like I like freaked out because I was like I think I was at a place where I was so scared to put it out. I was so scared that the production wasn't right because we hadn't like worked on it yet. And I was like, nothing's working, nothing sounds right. Like it's not giving the same, you know, feeling that the voice memo had. And that's like ultimately what I was chasing was that like raw emotional feeling that I had from the day that I finished writing it and you know, whatever, recorded it. And so, yeah, I remember they were like saying some stuff about like the production and I like jumped down their throat, which is something that I do when I'm like about to cry. And I like couldn't just be like, guys, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I just like got mad. And then they got mad. And then it turned into like a whole thing. But then they realized that I was actually sad. So then we dissected it and I cried. And I was like, you know what? This means that I have to put it out because I obviously really care about this song, but I'm very scared. So that was kind of like the point where I like was like officially like, yes, it's happening, but I'm very scared about doing it and accepted that I was uncomfortable putting it out. I do think the song was healing in a sense for sure i think that being uh this open and like honest with myself and also like people who listen to my music just was so deeply personal and i think that that allowed me to connect with people in a way that i hadn't yet so in that way I, i'd say it was healing i do think that like some of the stuff that i talked about in that song are still ongoing like i don't think when you get that personal like those things just kind of vanish once the song is out or done being written like you're still dealing with whatever it is that you're you know is going on in your personal life to some extent um but i think i was really proud of myself that i was able to word it in a way that felt authentic and also left enough room for people to relate to it in their own way and tie it into their own lives and not you know only associate it with my story that was really important to me so yeah i would say it was healing in that way Yeah, this was definitely the toughest song to finish for the project, which is funny because once we knew what it needed to be, it was the easiest because mm -hmm. it's virtually live. But like we did an acoustic version at first, yeah. but we built it kind of and it was like a thing and then there was too much. And then we did the piano version and then we tried like, like an ambient sound, an electric one. guitar yeah. version with like baritone guitar. Yeah. And they were all cool yeah. in their own ways, but like just not right because because at the end of the day, like what we were missing was the same feeling that the voice memo had. We were trying too hard at that point to recreate it. So I think, yeah. I guess what we had decided was like, we need to do this live and kind of like do like an elevated voice message or a voice memo in a way. Yeah. 
it was really a challenge for ourselves too to just like not care about imperfections and yeah, really exactly. like just let things live as performances and like a capture of the moment so like even when katie was playing strings it was like she would do something not exactly the way she wanted or like it would be it would sound like a little off and she'd be like let me hit that one more time and if you said no mm -hmm. i'd just be like it's, it's perfect like we just wanted everything raw and like yeah. super organic and the yeah. live takes are like actually unedited, untouched completely. So I remember doing with of... no headphones too, which was weird. I'd never done that before. I oh like, yeah. I That's, literally just like yeah. listened to him playing it from the corner of the room and like did with no headphones because I felt like when I was hearing myself so like closely, I was overthinking my vocal too. So I remember, yeah, doing no headphones and also pulling up like depressing photos on my phone because I was like, I'm going to get in touch with my emotions, guys. So I was like, let me do it. And I like pulled up some stuff and he had to wait. And that's why at the beginning he's like, are you ready? And I was like, yeah, it's because I had been staring at my depressing photos for like 10 minutes until I got into the right spot mentally. Yeah. So. It was really important to me that this project had thematically and, and just like the way that the world was being built. I wanted it to be Florida for sure. I'm there so much of the year as it is because I'm originally from Tampa. So I wanted to take us back to like my hometown, especially with Mason Street. I wanted to go to places that like gave me that same nostalgic feeling that originally inspired the song in the first place. So we all, me working holiday, my management like flew out to my hometown and really shot everything in the span of like two and a half days i believe and the song was shot all in one day and from morning to night it was like a long it was a long day but like it needed to be because i think it also kind of just helped me like stay in that headspace so that like my performance would show what i was feeling about the song and i didn't you know split anything up it was just kind of all there and i wanted the video to also have like a message that was meaningful through like the emotion in my face and in just like the visuals but not be too much of a storyline to where it would take away from the song